So what we will show you. We have here a simple beam. Simple beam. We will measure the frequency response uh, uh, functions at 10 points. Impact excitation, a rowing hammer, and uh, yes, what you see here is you have four steps, so you need to define the geometry, measurement, analysis, and animation, and we will first start with geometry. What we need, we need to define 10 points. Blush is now putting uh, data for the 10 points. For sure you have all the modern uh, user interface capabilities like here, uh, copy and paste. You can also import universal file format and uh, as the points are defined, you can see here that the uh, uh, view is updated. Now we will focus slightly uh, to the uh, defined geometry. You can now easily add, uh, so we are now at adding nodes. Now Blush will add lines, and then you can also continue with triangles. Uh, I said that uh, we have import and export capabilities for the standard universal file format. Let's see now, okay. Okay, then we will continue with the measurement. Okay. Uh, We will not show you three angles here, but if you would have like a surface or whatever, then you need to have the support uh, for three angles for complex uh, geometries. And uh, this is not the case here because we are showing you uh, a simple uh, case and how it is implemented, uh, so the current state. So let's go now to measurement. Uh, Okay, we have here a window that I will explain later, but now we will go to measurement. We need to define the uh, data acquisition system. What we are using here, we, we are using a national instruments uh, DACU system, which is very common in uh, uh, research and also, uh, so in research and also industries uh, uh, all over the world. So what you need to define is here uh, uh, impact uh, and response acceleration, acceleration measurement, uh, window length, uh, zero padding, uh, window parameters, averaging, uh, trigger level, and also what uh, Micha did here is or already show like a test run. We are happy with the test run now in the frequency domain, and we will now continue with the measurement. As we have, as we have a roving hammer uh, option, the uh, the geometry is directly linked to the measurement and uh, the uh, reference nodes are uh, appropriately corrected. So you see here the time domain impact. Here is a zoom of the time domain so you can see if you have uh, double hits. Here is the frequency domain of the uh, impact hammer. You see the frequency response and that is the acceleration, uh, acceleration uh, time domain. Frequency response functions are shown here. You see that we are already at uh, point number six out of 10. Uh, so you see everything is running quite smoothly. If we are happy with the measurement, we just accept it and we move then to the next point in the geometry. The next thing is we now have the frequency response functions for 10 points. We can go now directly to animation and we can show the deflection shapes directly without any model identification methods. So we are now showing here, we, you see the first natural frequency at roughly 317 hertz. Okay, and you can directly out of frequency response function, you can show the deflection shapes. But the other way typical in model analysis is to go to the analysis. So we could now continue with the second uh, uh, natural frequency, but we are now going to the analysis and we will use the less squares complex expo exponential method. Mm. We have here some options like sum of frequency response functions or uh, complex mode uh, 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 mode shape indicator fu function here. And uh, yes, we, with this less squares complex exponential method, we need to define the frequency range, range of interest. We will go here from S100 yes, to uh, one kilohertz. Then the next step is the stabilization diagram. Okay, what we need to uh, 
select here are the stable poles. Stable poles have been selected, and next step is the reconstruction. And you can now see blue curve is the reconstructed frequency response function, and red is the regionally measured one. Uh, we see that we have a good reconstruction at, at all uh, measurement location, locations. So we go back to animation, and now we can uh, show the identified uh, mode shapes. So that is now the identified mode shape, and the second identified mode shape. Okay, thank you, Blush. Uh, 